<laughs> Hello and welcome to another exterior video where I work on my truck. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. And on today's beautiful but freezing day, I'm gonna be working on my truck and I'm gonna try to modify something that our trucks don't really have, which is a TPMS monitoring system. Yes, they have it, but all you get is just one silly light that comes on when the light's pressure is abnormal. And of course, this probably applies to some other trucks, older cars that don't have a monitoring system, but I'm gonna fix that because this is what I got. I got this tire pressure monitoring system by Taymate. Taymate? I hope I pronounce it right, but you know me, I never pronounce stuff right. <laughs> they have multiple system, multiple setups, uh, but I'm gonna show you which one I choose. I had some kind of idea to mount it permanently, but we'll see uh, how this is gonna come out. So let's open this up. Let's take a quick look what's inside and then I'm gonna work on installing it. Of course, as always, it comes with a manual. Here's a power cable that plugs directly into the cigarette lighter, which I'm playing and I'm hoping I can modify this. And this is the unit itself. It's a color screen, a uh, little screen. They have a uh, just a simple one where you plug in into the cigarette lighter. You don't have to worry about any wiring. That's pretty neat. They also have a bigger model that you put on top of your dash and it's also solar powered. So that's pretty cool. So as the second option, you can use something like this. It's uh, by the same brand and hopefully the light will focus over here. All right, there we go. So it also reads the uh, temperature and air pressure and it's uh, solar and it has a built-in batteries as well so so if you don't want to mount it to your window you can use something like this but everything else is the same and you get the same sensors on the tires it comes with all the kind of accessory over here the tool the locking tool these tools you always should keep in your truck that way you can disassemble it it's a little bit windy today guys i'm sorry <laughs> i don't want stuff to fly around and there, here is the sensor itself they all labeled for which tire you're supposed to put them. We're gonna look at it closer soon. This unit that I got, it has a suction cup, so you can just put it on your glass, but I may have a different solution how I'm gonna mount it. Now it's gonna be a good thing to have a monitoring system for a tire, that way you know how much air you have. I mean, you can always just look at a tire when the light comes off and you check, but it's good to have it. Now it also might be a little bit of a hassle in the future, if you have to air down constantly, you have to take it off. But I mean, how long is it gonna take you to take off the sensor and just put it away in a safe spot? I don't think it's much of a big of a deal. I mean, you gotta be really, really lazy if that's gonna be something that is gonna discourage you to using it. It's not like you're airing down 24 seven, <laughs> right? I mean, but it's always good to know how much tire pressure and temperature you have in your tires. So right now I'm gonna just check, go around all four tires and check how much tire pressure I have in them. So that way we can compare and we're gonna test it how accurate those sensors are. So now starting with the front driver's side, let's see how much air we have. And it looks like I have 28.5 PSI, which is kind of low. Now let's try the driver rear and over here I have 29 psi which is also a little bit low if I'm not mistaken we're supposed to run 33 psi so now let's check the passenger front and over here we have 28.5 as well and the passenger rear 28.5 as well so let's install all the sensors on all the tires so to install the sensors it's pretty easy just follow the instructions it says which sensor goes where and they all marked anyways so this is front left front right left rear rear right simple as that so let's remove the cup this we're gonna keep with us in the truck first let's take the dust boot out and put it over the stem cell right something like that now let's take a security nut and let's put it over stem wall. And now let's take our sensor out and let's screw it in place. Now these boots are kind of getting in the way, but this is just something you have to deal with. Okay, make sure it's tight. Okay, hopefully that's 
that should be tight enough and now with the security wrench we're gonna tighten this nut all the way and that's gonna hold it in place as well now for now i'm just gonna leave it as it is i'm gonna put all the sensors on we're gonna check the tire pressure and then later i'm actually gonna try to air down one of the tires to see if it's gonna sense anything and then i'm gonna put air back on up now the reason why I choose I choose this unit because this I was hoping I can mount it somewhere maybe near my unit over here. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm gonna take a better picture later, but somewhere here probably. And it's flat. So that way I can mount somewhat almost flush. And in the back it has a screw for this uh, suction cup, but I'm not gonna use that. I'm probably gonna make a hole somewhere and screw it with a screw to hold it in place also it comes with its uh, power cord which you're supposed to plug in into cigarette lighter but what I'm actually gonna do I'm gonna remove my cigarette lighter port I'm gonna replace it with uh, two USB charging ports and that cigarette lighter port I'm not gonna I was thinking maybe to cut this cable but I'm not sure if this has a converter inside to convert it from 12 volt to 5 volt I'm not sure if this takes 5 volt or not. I'm not sure if this takes 12 volt directly. I don't want to burn the unit. On the website description it says 12 to 24 volts. So I'm actually going to test that as well. So my plan was to take out one of the cigarette lighters that we have. And just uh, hide it all inside underneath the dash. And splice it through that way. Inside here there is a fuse. If you open this up there is a built in fuse. That way it's going to be protected. So let me try to figure out this really quick how I'm gonna and where I'm gonna mount this power it up and we're gonna program this so I actually took this apart and as you can see there is nothing here it's just direct feed from 12 volt DC to the unit so technically you can cut these cables off and just splice it to your power source whether it's gonna be key power or not that depends how you want this but yeah so there is no problem of cutting this cable so now just for a sake of this video I'm gonna program the unit like that and then I'm gonna mount it so let's try to program it together so I simply connected the other end to the cigarette lighter so now let's connect this over here I'm gonna try to read the manual to see how to program this but this should be easy so let's plug the power in there you go nice color display I don't have any sensors connected yet because I believe it's recommended to program it first and then we can connect the sensors but as you can see it's already showing me the low temperature well there is nothing connected of course it actually shows you the battery as well so that's pretty neat but anyways let's program it to get into the programming mode you have to press and hold the set button until it beeps there we go now we can program the tires so simply by changing the plus and minus we can change the settings from PSI to bar but I'm gonna keep it at PSI press uh, press the setting again so now you have a temperature over here we can change it from Celsius to Fahrenheit whatever is more convenient for you now we're gonna change the our alarm at which tire pressure it's gonna let you know that something's wrong by default it's set to 45 I'm gonna set it at 40 at 41 and my low alarm I'm gonna set at 25 so whenever a tire goes below 25 it's gonna sound me the alarm hopefully and now we're just gonna repeat the procedure okay and okay I believe that's all of it now to get out from the programming all you have to do is just simply unplug the power and that should be it now we can go and install the the sensors on the tires a few moments later all right all the sensors are installed so now let's power up the unit and let's see what kind of da data we're gonna read okay we got one tire which was 29 psi the rear it also actually recommended to drive for a few miles so the sensors can read everything all right so after a short drive this is the readings we're getting right now so as you can see it's somewhat accurate i mean at least it gives you a ring uh so that 
the tires probably warmed, warmed up so the temperature changed on them and if you press set one more time you can see what the temperature inside the tire right now let's press the set again and we're back to the PSI and actually to get it whenever you're doing the programming to get out from the programming you have to set and you have to press the set button and hold it until it beeps and gets out from the programming so now I'm gonna remove all the sensors one more time I'm gonna deflate my driver's side my front driver's side and we'll see if that's gonna tell me if the tire is low or not and then I'm gonna fill up all the tires to appropriate PSI all right so let's see how much PSI I have in there right now and I have 13 PSI in this tire so let's put the sensor back on and let's see how much PSI I have in this tire all right so I just started a truck and let's see how long it's gonna take for it to see that uh, we miss in the air as of now it's still telling me that it's 31 psi in there but let's say if i start moving forward and as you can see we drove just a little bit and it started to beep and it shows me that we have a 13 psi in that tire so as you can see it does shows that it's only 13 psi in my front driver's side tire and it's giving me an alarm and of course the low tire pressure light is on so that's pretty good so now i'm gonna take my air compressor out and fill up all the tires to 35 psi and then we're gonna test it again And there we go we are 35 psi nice so this is how it looks when the sensor and a dust shield is installed so it covers it pretty nice one thing i may lose the dust shields eventually <laughs> and what i mean i might remove them on purpose because i don't think it's really necessary there is a gasket between the two portion of the sensor whenever you unscrew them they actually provide you extra gaskets that's whenever you change the batteries so I don't think I'm gonna need this because this is gonna be in the way of me of airing down and airing up it's kind of gets in the way that way it's easier gonna be easier for me just to loosen up the securities not in the back remove the sensor air down air up and yeah but for now I'm just gonna keep it here it's winter now anyways so now I'm just gonna figure out where exactly I'm gonna install it I'm actually thinking to install it somehow over here not too sure yet how is that gonna work out but let me work on it and I'll show you if that worked out or not but you can always just mount simply to your window and that's it and call it a day so I remove my lower panel and behind here where I'm planning to install it there is nothing here it's just empty space so I can easily make a hole over here and secure it with the bolt so that's gonna be permanently over there hopefully it's not gonna move but I'm probably gonna put I'm gonna put some kind of spacer or trim tape as well so it just doesn't move but once it's here it's not gonna move anywhere the only thing I wish the power input was either on the back or was on the right side that way I can hide the cable inside here but I guess this is something I have to live with so I removed the cigarette lighter by simply unplugging the cable in the back and then this you just have to wiggle it out there is uh, there is like two clips on the side but if you just wiggle it around it's gonna come off and over here and over here eventually I already ordered it it just didn't come in I'm gonna put a double USB charging port over here and over here so I don't really need this but this I'm gonna keep because that's where I'm gonna connect my keeping mess monitoring system and this is gonna be security in the back that way it also gonna have a fuse and it's also gonna be kit powered so just to make my life slightly easier for once all right so i secure it over here as you can see i put electrical tape and i put a zip tie over here so it's not gonna interfere with anything it's not gonna bounce around or anything so this is gonna be good so now i'm just gonna put everything back in place fix the wiring and it's all done and as you can see guys it's all mounted and it's working it's still reading the old PSI but once you start driving for just about a little bit 
it's gonna get normal so let's do that all right guys as you can see the tire pre pressure is, is all up and normal this one is shows 36 but it's actually 35.5 so I might deflate this a little bit, or maybe not, <laughs> but this is all good now. Also, as you can see, I had this hole over there where I got the wire for my, for my scan gauge. So that's where I got that wire. I may keep this unit up there. I may not. We'll see. Maybe eventually I'll find a better solution. But for now, it's pretty good and I'm pretty happy. And of course it has a battery reading over there and a tire pressure reading over here. I know the numbers are flickering, but they actually not. When you look at the screen, it's just a frame rate of the camera. You see the flickering, but it actually stays solid color. So that's pretty good. 2000 years later. As time went by, I actually got rid of those uh, boots. Uh, maybe within the first couple of months because they kind of they kind of annoying so I've been driving without those rubber boots for almost a year now I had no issues whatsoever so this is totally fine and sometime down the line I actually relocated this from the window over here I just made this small little bracket over here and then it just with the two magnets she just sits on top of this and <laughs> working just fine as well and I'm quickly losing the daylight but the project is done and I'm pretty happy how it all came out so now I have somewhat a uh, more intelligent TPMS sensor system so I can see what the tire pressure is. Of course there is many different systems and um, you can choose whatever you want. <laughs> but I wanted to give this one a shot so put it all working good. And let me know what kind of system you, you are using if you are using any. As always I'm gonna leave all the links in the description so you guys can check it out in case you guys want to install that as well and use it. So I hope you guys find this video helpful, maybe you guys are gonna do something like this or not, let me know. And uh, as always, until next time, everybody, bye!